But for this project, all I'm going to do is add a plane. And it's in there a little ways back. Um, let's pull it forward. Let's pull them up here. 90. There we go. So just a simple little plane for using for my scene. In my content drawer, I'm going to, I've already created a folder for media. I'm going to right click inside, go to media, add media, file media source. And I'm just, I'm, this is short and sweet, so we're not going to worry about renaming it. Let's also go ahead and add media player. Yes, we're going to use the video output as a media, media texture asset. So click on the OK. Again, we can keep the same name. It automatically creates our texture for us, making our life a little bit easier. Go over here for, to the file source. Oh, no, open it. You need to select the source file or file path to your media source. Now, it's best if it's inside of Unreal. Unreal prefers that, but it's not an absolute requirement. So this is something that a certain student made earlier, and we'll go ahead and use that. It's going to give you an error saying, hey, it's not inside. It doesn't matter. So just save it, and it'll be okay. It's, it's not going to break your project. In our content drawer, just simply take your texture that was created and drag it onto the scene, which will change it from blue to black. So you know something's going on there, but not everything's set up correctly. We're going to need sequ sequencer set up. So let's add a sequencer level. And again, I'm not going to spend very much time on this. Click on add, and we want to add a media track. Inside the media track, we want to set the media source to our new media file source, which we just set up. That'll automatically import that into the scene. Right click on that, go to properties, and down here where it says media texture, set that to new media video. Okay, and there we have it showing. It looks like I need to rotate this. Okay, we're going to do it the other way. We'll just go to rotate. And we could go, if, if you're not happy with how it looks and stuff like that, you could go in and resize it, give it a little more width, because this was, this was shot in 1080p, 16 by 9, so that'll look a little bit more realistic. It, it's ready to go. The scene will play. It is so easy. Yeah. Uh, now, like I said, this is not live media capture. This is already edited, but sometimes that's better. Um, for, for most instances, that's probably easier to work with. There are times, though, where doing live streaming mixed reality is what you need to be able to do, um, you know, if you're shooting the Mandalorian or something like that. You can use chroma key inside of Unreal to chroma key it out. Uh, but it, you right, using this method, you can't do it live. So if I were to... You were like recording actively. Right, and then plugging it straight into this. There is a way to do that. You can use Live Link. There are tools to do that. So I guess when you have to export it, there's going to be like, you have to add like the, like the camera cut to like, like have the sequence and the same How is it going to... Oh, as the movie? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If I were right, if I were to add, well, just go up here and add a camera. Okay. And this is what's going to export up here at the top. Yeah. There's my camera view. So this is what would export. Good question. Yeah. It, I, well, and this part is it's it's when you start getting into live moving parts connecting everything together that's when it complexity jumps yeah blender um unity 
Unreal, they're, it, they've simplified this process dramatically over the last few years. So yeah, the average person can now easily do chroma keying and mixed reality type projects.